So I want to start us off with a question. Who is that larger than life person for you? Think about it. I mean, is it, a, is it this larger than life sports figure? Is it a world renowned author? Or maybe it's a speaker. Maybe it's a famous actor or a musician, or maybe it's just a whole band. Now, what would you do if you knew they were in the same town as you? Would you go see them? What would you wear? What would you wear? I mean, think about all the questions. But also, at the most, at the biggest point, think about the anticipation you would have if you knew that you could get your eyes on them. You see, in our reading today, we pick up the story in the timeline of Jesus' life, right after his entry into Jerusalem, the week he was going to go to the cross. And there was this buzz in Jerusalem. You see, it was the time of the Passover, and word of Jesus and the rumor mill of, of who he was is, was at an all-time high. Every street corner conversation, every dinner table discussion, there were whispers. Could this be him? Like, could this be the appointed time? You see, if you were a Jew, you knew from the Old Testament that God was going to bring a Messiah, the one who was going to establish God's kingdom on earth, literally heaven on earth, God dwelling with them once and for all. Jews thought the Messiah was going to come and free them from the rule and oppression of the Romans. It's why when you read about the triumphal entry, they were crying, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. You see, it's a Hebrew word that basically means save now, save now. They were crying, save now, save now. You see, they were ready. They were ready for an overthrow with military might and power. And I love Jesus. He was always looking, he was always going to go turning the world upside down on its head. You see, the Jews were looking at things through earthly eyes. Jesus was always looking at things through eternal eyes. The Jews wanted to conquer the power of the Roman rule, while Jesus came to conquer the power of sin and death itself. Praise God that his plan is better than ours, our best thought earthly plan. Amen? And Jesus reveals God's plan when he talks about the grain of wheat falling to the earth and dying, bearing much fruit. This, of course, is Jesus foreshadowing his death. But it also points to how God's kingdom will live on inside you and me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus lets us know exactly how we can receive that spirit and be part of continuing his ministry on earth. He says those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. You know, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says it like this. He says, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Let me ask you something this morning, St. Stephen's. What must you die to today? What sin in your life continues to hold you back from experiencing God on such a deeper level? You see, this is why the season of Lent is so meaningful. It's a time to reflect on the saving power of Jesus in your life, to be reminded of this thing called grace, God's unmerited favor, a gift you could never earn on your own, all because Jesus had you, had you in mind that day. He hung there on the cross. And the very moment you surrender everything to him is the very moment he births something new in you. Earthly eyes replaced with eternal eyes. Death to life. Let me pray. Father, Father God, we praise you for all of this amazing creation around us a constant reminder of the fact that you care so deeply for us. God, you're not a God that sits up above the heavens and just sits in a chair. No, God, you are alive and active. It's why you gave your son Jesus for us. And in this moment, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for what he did on that cross. We thank you for what that allowed us to experience through him and in him. And Lord, I just pray for your spirit to do a, a mighty work this week in the hearers of this message. May you reveal something, this, this something that they're holding on from a earthly standpoint, Lord, from a worldly standpoint, something that is distracting them from keeping their eyes on you and fully devoting their heart to you. Oh, Lord Jesus, in, in this time leading up to Easter, 
may they see you with fresh eyes, eternal eyes. And Lord, may they see those who they have relationships with, with eternal eyes. May they bear much fruit for your kingdom in their home, in their neighborhood, in the city, and to wherever you may call them. In your name we pray.